Ten Misconceptions About Religions 10. The Prophet Muhammad recited the Holy Quran. This is factually incorrect. The Prophet Muhammad died before the Quran was put together. It was collated after his death, and those which were chosen by the fledgling religious authority at the time, as well as Hamid's wife Aisha, were put together into what we now know as the Quran. There were corrections, there were things simply thrown away. It's far from, in any sense of the word, perfect. It is far from the perfect word of God, certainly. It's not even the perfect words, the perfect thoughts of the Prophet Muhammad, and therefore cannot be the perfect word of God, even if you believe that he was a prophet, the greatest prophet on the part of Allah. 9. There isn't a serious difference between a religion and a cult. They're the same sort of thing in most cases. A culture of religion. A person can belong to a culture, and that culture can be called the Roman Catholic Church. Religious cultures can be extreme, and dangerous religions are dangerous cults. However, the term cult can refer to political ideas, fandoms, and fashions. So, although there is a great similarity, and there is a great overlap, not all religions are necessarily best described as being a cult if we talk about dangerous cults. And when it comes down to cults, not all cults are religions. 8. Jesus is not set in secular history. There is no solid evidence for the existence of that prophet or son of God. We don't know he existed, we don't know he carried out any miracles. There is no historical evidence of that kind. There is no rival religion condemning or dismissing him. There is merely some suggested history, and may well be added later on to try and support the idea of the existence of Jesus. Even if he existed, we have no evidence of his miracles, we have no evidence of his divinity, we have no proof at all of anything that makes him in any way special, above and beyond, an eccentric rabbi. 7. Islam isn't a single belief system. Very much like Christianity, you have sects or schools of thought. With Christianity, you have the idea that you're a Christian if you accept the Gospels, the concept of Jesus basically being divine or semi-divine. But the stories involved, such as the resurrection, are key to being a Christian. Without those ideas, you can't very well be a Christian, not in the religious sense, perhaps in a cultural sense, but in terms of religion, you need to accept certain core principles. Within Islam, they're the five pillars of Islam. These five pillars, these five points, are the fundamentals of being a Muslim. And if you accept these ideas, you are a Muslim, whether you're liberal, conservative, ultra-conservative, or a member of ISIS. The degree of variation between different sects is massive, and certain sects have certain extra ideas that you're meant to take on board. 6. There are many popes within Christian religions, Christian sects. The Roman Catholic Pope is the best known. So typically when someone says the Pope, they're referring to the Pope in charge of the Roman Catholic Church. However, various other sects also have popes or patriarchs in charge of their organizations, some even with rival leaders. The Coptic Christians of Egypt have a pope. With Orthodox Christianity, you have various patriarchs, fathers of the church. 5. All religions are different, and yet in some ways the same. They're different in what they believe. They're different in how they believe certain things, some things they accept, some things they reject. However, how they think, or how they encourage people to think, or in other cases, force people to think, is very similar. The idea of indoctrination, of encouraging people to accept things on faith, this is very similar in most religions. 
The idea of God or heaven or nirvana, enlightenment, of angels, demons, hell, those are variables. But how they operate in terms of teaching you to take the belief ahead of the reality and to find your belief and reject other beliefs, that's extremely common. However, some religions are so undogmatic or so limited in their dogma that they do not encourage that kind of isolation of thought. As a result, people belong to a broad and slightly nebulous idea of being, for example, a Buddhist. Whereas in actuality, all they've done is accept certain key principles, but they're not necessarily a devout and highly religious Buddhist. The same can be said for some sects of Christianity and various other religions around the world, where it has very little impact on the person, and they might well explore different ideas without too much restriction. This is far from the extreme case of the doomsday cult, or for that matter the terrorist organisation, which might well follow certain religious principles. 4. There are no known miracles. People claim miracles happen. People claim to have witnessed miracles. People claim to have evidence for miracles. Except this evidence, when under scrutiny, fails. When tested, there are reasonable explanations. The miraculous is typically the unexplained, the unexamined. Not necessarily the true miracle, or a true action of the divine, a true intervention, or suspension of the natural order. Typically the miraculous is the unlikely, but probable, and then people simply attribute it to a divine source. 3. Female circumcision isn't extremely rare. People make out it's a minor concern, and although the numbers are indeed dropping, it is still a massive problem that affects 200 million women around the world, mostly in Africa and the Middle East, as well as Indonesia. But still, we are talking of a massive problem that affects huge numbers of women. However, not all female circumcision is strictly the same. Some of it goes all the way with the removal of the clitoris and the sewing up of the vaginal cavity to a small crevasse. In other cases, it's more of a pinprick, where they merely scrape or do harm to the genitals. In any case, this is a horrendous mutilation and abuse of women, and affecting over 200 million women around the world. A disgusting practice done purely for religious reasons. 2. The Great Flood did not take place. There have been various floods around the world with different cultures. Not every single culture reports floods. Those floods which allegedly took place are in different times, different places, and at no level is there proof for a global event. There is no evidence of this. And even if you point out a variety of different flood myths, you do not confirm the truth of the Great Flood. And yet many people out there are willing to ignore the evidence that doesn't fit their view and simply state the broad strokes. Oh, there's a flood myth from, well, pretty much wherever there's a river or some body of water. And yes, therefore there must be a correlation and it must relate to the Great Flood, even though these were temporary events. And the myths beyond that of the Bible and relating texts refer to, well, their survival. There was a great disaster, but they survived and rebuild. There was no global flood that covered all of the land masses of the world. That should go without saying. There wasn't even, from what we know, a tsunami which could have covered the land even temporarily. So, what nonsense is it that religious people, especially Christians, but not exclusively Christians, also Muslims, can claim there was indeed a global flood, and it lasted for a prolonged period, with examples of every species or kind of animal on a boat. 1. From our present knowledge, from what religion states, 
we cannot know the one true religion. We cannot know which one is correct, if any of them are correct. And from what we see, they're factually incorrect. It doesn't make the ones which are making less mistakes more true. The problem is that religion itself doesn't adhere to the facts. It tries to promote itself by selecting facts. And as a result, we find all of the religions around the world, no matter their best efforts, to be equally as poorly suited for discovering the truth about the nature of reality itself, about the world around us. And as a result, we cannot say that any of these religions are indeed the true belief. The best they can do is simply offer apologetics or suggestion. They can try and make facts work with their religion. But the fact is, they still do not prove their religion to be superior to the other religions, where Christianity might select out certain passages from the Bible and suggest a scientific meaning. The Muslims can do the same. So can the Hindus. So can any number of other beliefs, with or without holy texts. And if there was one true religion, we have no reason to believe that that true religion is any of the major world religions. But of course, if you disagree with this opinion, any of the opinions in this video, feel free to moan about it in the comments section.